Hello, everyone, and welcome to an edition of 100 Yards Football Sports Talk Radio. I'm your producer this afternoon, Logan Landers. And before we get into our show today, talking about the NFL draft prospect Malachi Corley, the wide receiver out of Western Kentucky, um, we felt it was just necessary that we come on here on the show and send our thoughts, prayers, our condolences about the senseless shooting that occurred the other day on February the 14th out in Kansas City at the Kansas City Chiefs victory celebration, their Super Bowl celebration, the parade. Um, very unfortunate. One person has been killed and 21 others were injured, including 11 children in a very sad and unfortunate situation. Uh, so all of us here at 100 Yards Football would like to send our thoughts, prayers, and condolences to the friends, families, and loved ones and all of those affected out in Kansas City due to the senseless violence that occurred yesterday. Now, without further ado, I'll kick it over to Mr. Football, Vincent Turner. We will get the show on the road. Vincent, the floor is yours. We'd like to say very, very appreciation to Mr. Logan Landers. And once again, to the families in Kansas City, Missouri, what happened yesterday, just a terrible, terrible tragedy. Now, let's get to 100 yards of football, the draft, which is going to happen in the last week of April, I believe April the 27th. And it's always a pleasure to talk about all these great players. I get very excited, but I get more excited because I got the most talented guy joining me today to talk about all these great prospects. I'm your host, Vincent Turner. If you like the video today, please come in and share it. Our 2024 NFL draft prospect today is Malachi Corley, wide receiver out of West Kentucky. And joining me today to talk about this young man's skill level at his highest level. He comes from Key West, Florida. He's out of the area of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And ever since he's came into my life, I have a different opinion on these great players because this gentleman did this at the highest level as a scout with the New York Jets, studying under the great Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick. When I talk about talent, watching game film, knowing how these players are going to perform at the next level, as I just mentioned, there's nobody more talented than this guy right here. And I'm going to say this, from 100 yards of football, we are very blessed, very prayful that we got this gentleman joining us today. And I call him the Steve, excuse me, I'm going to back up, I'm going to call him the Phil Collins of the 2024 NFL Draft, the very talented Mr. Daniel Kelly. How you doing today? And let's talk about Malachi Corley. Absolutely, Mr. Turner. Well, it is kind of a somber day, just reflecting. I'll just echo it real quickly what the two of you gentlemen have talked about here on 100 Yards of Football. It is a somber day, just re remembering, reflecting on the events that happened yesterday with the Chiefs uh, Super Bowl parade and, and just a real reminder that, you know, there's a real human element to this and a human component to the great game that we love. And my thoughts, prayers, and condolences as well uh, go out to the families and everybody who's been affected by this and everybody who's seen it around the country. I think it's just a, a real unfortunate situation. It helps us remember what's really important. Let's get to Malachi Corley. Absolutely. Absolutely. Malachi Corley. Malachi Corley. There we see him. Number 11 on your screen. And boy, oh boy, I have a lot to say about Malachi Corley. Uh, 5'11", 200 pounds. And the thing that's a little bit different about my website, firstroundmock.com, is that we don't really sing with the choir and we don't get along to go along or go along to get along, however you say that. Um, everything we do at firstroundmock.com is predicated upon the game film. Game film trumps everything. All I do is write down what these prospects do on the game film with that being said in 2022 i looked at six games um, and the links are right on the report if you wish to see them and in 2023 i looked at malachi corley there on your screen against the ohio state middle tennessee state troy louisiana tech sam houston jacksonville state and liberty university and what or what does the game film say? Well, you're looking at your screen. You're looking at a receiver that is built like a running back. In today's game, with all the short little passes and the short little bubble wide receiver screens and all those things, type of things built in in today's NFL game and the importance of yakety yak, yards after the catch, Malachi Corley, is the guy to look out for in this draft class. 
Add in the fact there are a lot of corners. I watch the game film week in and week out. I'm a quarterback writer for Yard Barker as well. And I watch these NFL cornerbacks, and they are shoddy tacklers at best, a lot of these guys, which, of course, um, is why we have – a first round prospect in your screen to talk about and to look at with Malachi Corley, who does draw comparisons, mind you, uh, not just by me, but there's others out there too in the draft community to 49ers superstar wide receiver Debo Samuel based on his build and frame and yards after the catch. This is one of these ideal type of picks, luxury picks, where the rich will get richer, uh, probably at, toward the end of the first round uh, of the draft here coming up here in April. He, Malachi Cordley is my WR8 on my wide receiver board in a receiver-loaded class. I think the record for receivers being taken in the first round was, I believe, back in 2004 was seven. We may see eight in the first round round because there are eight who have first round characteristics and traits Malachi Corley being one of them when when really it's 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 when you look at the whole situation it's it's something Malachi Corley does also for an NFL offense is he is short game actually you know helps helps basically open things up a lot for not only for himself but also for other receivers out there. Um, that's one of the things that qualify uh, Malachi Corley. Another thing, too, is his short area burst, which is a characteristic and trait that is common amongst first-round type of elite game-changing wide receivers. He has that built in as well. Uh, the Panthers, right, Carolina down there, uh, can only pray that he, he somehow, some way slips into the early second round because this guy would be an absolute game changer for second year quarterback uh, Bryce Young. And, and this is a guy who has a rep for a yak, as I mentioned, which stands for yards after the catch in 2022, 975 out of his 1300 receiving yards came after the catch. And uh, during his time, according to A to Z sports.com during his time at Western Kentucky, he forced 69 missed tackles. This guy is a hand to bring down, which is what I'm trying to communicate. And he's a dream come true for some lucky offensive coordinator in the NFL because he's going to excel in the short to intermediate route range. He excels in short slants, also with shallow crossing patterns coming back across the, the quarterback's face. He's somebody that is a chain mover. That's what I call a guy like Malachi Corday, a chain mover. That's that's a that's a first down, as, as the referees would say, and they motion for the first down. I'm sure, Mr. Turner, you remember Michael Irvin, how he used to do that first down, you know, that signal at the end of every catch. That's what we're looking at here. We're looking at a chain mover, and, and he also is going to force NFL defenses to, to become more honest, uh, which is going to open things more up for other receivers, too, because they have to respect and honor or this guy in the short to intermediate route range. Uh, despite, I think on February 7th, the last time I checked on NFL mock draft database.com, which is a great source to see how the NFL draft community is seeing uh, prospects is a source I refer to in all my evaluations. At that point on February 7th, only 8.4% of the NFL draft platforms out there were seeing Corley as a first round grade. Uh, but um, hey, I'm not, I'm not afraid to stand uh, kind of alone on this one because I see the trend and the traits will transfer to success in the National Football League. Okay, let's take the microscope and drill down even more. Let's take a closer look at the positives and negatives about Malachi Corley. The positives, uh, this guy has uh, good versatility pre-snap. He's one of these type of receivers you can move around, motion. Uh, he tends to line up in the slot. He can take a handoff as well. He can take a jet sweep. He can do that. He's a stout. I mean, look at the pictures. You can just go on Google and pull up pictures of Malachi Corley. You can see he's got a stout sturdy frame uh he's muscular he, he's the way he's built is he, he, like i said he's built like a running back uh he's instinctual 
Okay, that's a big one in the NFL. You're going up against corners who have years and years and years, in some cases, of experience. It takes more than just a, a speed and, and a burst and, and a change of direction. As a receiver, you have to be able to feel things. Just like as a cornerback, you have to be able to feel things. You have to be able to feel the area. You have to be able to feel the ball. You have to be able to feel the game as it's going on. Malachi Cordley is instinctual. This is a trait that 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 Bill Bilicek really loved. Uh, I, I you know Coach Bilicek was a defensive coordinator of the Jets when I was there in pro scouting. It's a trait that the, the Baltimore Ravens love. Instinctual football players. There is a premium on that in certain organizations in the National Football League. Of course, Coach Bilicek's not in the league right now, but a lot of people who have been working with him are and look for instinctual traits in these players. Corley has that. And you know what's really encouraging? We look at level of competition, a key piece of the puzzle in the evaluation process. We talk about level of competition, you know, Western Kentucky. Well, you know, who did they play? That conversation starts generating and get listen. He held his own. If you go back and look at the game film link on, on my site, firstroundmock.com, it's available. He held his own against the Ohio State. Okay. That said something to me. He's playing against a, a top, a top tier team. This guy Corley is tough. He's physical with corners. He's wiggly as a route runner. He's got good ball tracking skills, which is imperative to have. To be able to that means be able to judge the ball when it's coming down where the ball is. Be able to feel the ball, know where the ball is, kind of like a center fielder in baseball that knows when to jump over the wall and catch the ball. Same type of thing with Corley. He's got good ball tracking skills, and he's a willing blocker. Okay, the negatives. Okay, everybody's got negatives. There's no perfect prospects here in any draft. Okay. The negatives are, are this, okay? Number one, when he's matched up in man-to-man -man coverage, it is not good on game film. This is why the Hilltoppers, Western Kentucky's nickname there, why they try to do everything humanly possible from a game planning perspective offensively to create as much space as they possibly could for Malachi Corley by, by, by doing different things, putting him in motion, pre-snap, stacking wide receivers, him behind one behind another. That's what that means, pre-snap. They did a lot of that there in Western Kentucky. Trying to gain, uh, trying to create our Artificially, a uh, space for Malachi Corley in his routes. He's got good, not great hands, but good enough. His catch rate has been holding over about 70%. I've done the math over the last three seasons. Um, you know, and when you look at him on game film, if I can just take out a paintbrush for a second and paint this picture with words, what does he look like when he releases from a line of scrimmage? Set hut. Okay, snap, ball snap. You know, quarterback claps, ball snapped. He's got a methodical looking release. And he looks methodical getting into his routes. He's got slightly rigid body movements when he when he turns directions at some rigidity there that does show up with Malachi Corley in his route running. And he rounds off, he tends to round off his routes at route breakpoints. What are route breakpoints? One of my biggest pet peeves in the football world is hearing these announcers that use all these high-level terminology in football without unpacking it. Well, guess what? We saw it in the Super Bowl. When I talk about you know rounding at the break points, the break points are where, where receivers change direction. So it's 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 a ten and in. So so the break point would be when the receiver cuts in or cuts out or you know at the ten yard marker cuts out. The 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 break points ideally for a receiver you want a receiver that has crisp just boop, boop, you know you just want a crisp change of direction. At the route break point, that's not Malachi Quarterly. He tends more like a coat hanger, the top of a coat hanger. He kind of rounds things off, if you can visualize that. And, and he's below average um, on contested passes. Um, unpolished route running is another thing. If I was sitting in an NFL war room, you know, having a pre-draft discussion, and my name was called on as a scout, I would talk about him looking unpolished as a route runner. This is why it's going to be imperative for Malachi Corley to have a quarterback who has precise downfield ball placement. But all in all, when you look at Malachi Corley, as far as like just kind of putting a bow on the package, so to speak, this guy is a game-changing wide receiver uh, because of his build and his forte. And it's all about finding game changers in the first round of the draft. And uh, Corley fits that profile as a game changer in the first round. Your thoughts on Malachi Corley, Mr. Turner? When I think about Malachi Corley, I think explosion. See, when I was growing up in the late 70s and early 80s, it was a band, an R&B band by the name of Midnight Star. They had, a, they had a song called Freakazoid. 
And when I look at Mr. Coyle, I look at his freak of sort of abilities, speed. He's like a 4-3 guy. Now, take, take this in accountability. He can bench press 355 pounds, as you just said, at 5'10", 200 pounds. Then I look at that production with Mr. Corley. See, I'm a big guy about production. In his career, 259 receptions, 3,036 yards. He averaged a career average per catch, 12 yards per catch, 29 total touchdowns. So the, what that's telling me, he's production. And then when you look at it, he's coming from Western Kentucky a school that hasn't produced a lot of good football players in the past, but they have produced some pros, George Fett, Jeremy Johnson, Forrest Lamp, who ended up being a pretty good offensive guard, Willie Taggart. We all know about Willie Taggart. Then Bobby Rainey, who's out of Griffin, Georgia. Then he's from Campbellville, Campbellsville, Kentucky, the same hometown, Mr. Kelly, that you should know this great individual, Clem Haskins, who used to be mm. a great coach at the University of Minnesota, took no, well, no, the name. basketball team to the Final Four. But when I look at this young man, I get excited because what you see is explosion. What you see is Antonio Brown. What you see is Sammy White out of Grambling. What you see is Charlie Joyner. What you see is Eric Metcalf that was at Texas with the Cleveland Browns. What you see is John Jefferson, who's at Arizona State that played with the Green Bay Packers in the San Diego Chargers. As I just mentioned, Eric Metcalf at Texas, David Palmer at Alabama. Woo, do he remind me of David Palmer. Really quick, quick, and create space when he catches the ball. And as you just mentioned, yards after the catch, A, 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 A plus. And then finally, Tavon Austin, who ended up being a pretty good receiver with the Rams out of West Virginia. When you look at this young man right here, whatever team drafts him, He's going to be a very, very explosive player. And one other point I want to bring up, when he was in high school, he's all state, not only at the wide receiver position, but he could have easily played cornerback at the next level because I think in high school, let me get this right, I want to get this right, he had 22 career interceptions in high school. So what you're getting is a guy that's very versatile and that's very dangerous in space. That's all I got to say about my man, Mr. Malachi Corley, freak at the highest level, 4'3", 355 on the bench, and a guy that was very productive at the next level. Yeah, I know. It's very interesting that you talk about, you know, how you how you compare him to all these greats uh, that, you know, have come through the league before because, you know, that's the beauty of understanding the history. You know, I know I've mentioned this before, but I think it's important to point out again, you know, what you bring to the table and every, every piece. And I want our listeners to catch this because this is something I learned at the Jets. Every piece of information, okay, is part of these prospects' puzzle and, and, and understanding the big picture. And really the goal here is getting it right. Not for the sake of ego or saying, hey, look at me, I got this guy right, blah, blah, blah. It's about getting it right for the sake of the prospect, okay? Because unmet expectations are the source of all human disappointment. Nobody loses more from overgrading than the prospect. We've seen it time and time again. The guy comes in. The game film doesn't match where he's taken. He's taken way too high. He ends up in situations. Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, blah, blah, blah. We could go on. These guys end up in situations where they you know, just can't live up to the expectations that have been created by the overgrading. So I appreciate the history of the game, Mr. Turner, that you bring. Because I think it's important when you start illustrating those types the names of the greats and, and how this plays into where Malachi Corley's you know, tra trajectory and how he's headed uh, because he does show a lot of these type of traits you're alluding to and that these greats have had throughout the years and I'm very excited to see where Malachi Corley ends up because I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say this for the record at the end of the first round okay is it fair probably not but at the end of the first round can you imagine I mean we just watched the Super Bowl can you imagine the Kansas City Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes adding a Malachi Corley to the mix on offense? I'll leave it at that. My final words about Malachi Corley is very simple. I was at the University of Arkansas from 7, 8 to 81, and he puts me in the mind finally of a football player that had a very good career. His name was Derek Holloway out of New Jersey. Mr. Holloway was about – Mr. Curly size, about 5'10", about 185, but he was very physical in space. And all I can say is 
That's a very interesting proposition that you just brought up, Mr. Daniel Kelly. Can you imagine him with the Kansas City Chiefs and what I consider maybe the greatest player that ever played the game, Mr. Patrick Mahomes? I'd like to give special thanks to our producer today, Mr. Logan Landers, the most talented guy doing this on the social media platform. Again, to my man out of Key West, Florida, the very talented. I call him the Phil Collins of the 2024 NFL Draft. Tonight, 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 Mr. Daniel Kelly. I've been your host, Vincent Turner. Y'all enjoy the rest of the week. One Thanks for watching. Football.